And welcome to what Melanie B likes to refer to as a demon palette. And not because it is full of reds and oranges and nightmares, but these colors are evil. <laughs> Back before we found companies that had fabulous paints, this was a demon palette because it has all of these deep streaky paints orange reds reds like i mean all of these paints were just horrible so i'm going to show you the transparent ones we're not going to work on all of them i'm going to pick a few that's all we're going to do number one super streaky number two transparent orange red number three transparent number four translucent number six translucent number seven translucent number eight translucent to transparent Number nine, super streaky, and that was it. So you can see there's a lot of, it kind of runs the gamut here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull the paints that I feel like we need to work on. I'm going to go ahead and swatch them on a new Three Shades of Grey swatch guide and have them ready. And then we're gonna talk about whether we're gonna do medium and dark primer and why. And then we'll we'll go ahead and do like we did in the last sample. So I'll get that ready and I'll be right back and then we'll go from there. So stay tuned. I swatched the original color. I've got the dark, I've got the orange red and a very light, almost tan, creamy color. And then a darker version of that, more of a tannish beige. And then I wanted a red so that I could show you how to choose between a medium and a dark if you're going to be painting those colors because these can be the colors that are like, I'm not sure which way to go. And so let's discuss these. Now the first one is not that bad, but this in general can be a very streaky paint, a very difficult color to work with on a general basis. So I'm gonna know right off the bat, just by looking at this color, that this is gonna require a dark prime, a dark underpaint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a dark swatch. And when you first look at this, you're gonna go, that's the dark gray. Like it's not super dark, right? But once it dries, it does darken up. God, I love this creamy paint. I know I say it every time I open it. <laughs> I just love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this. I'll fast forward. And you'll notice I just went ahead and cut off one of each of the paint pots. This is how I actually work with mine. I put whatever kit I'm working on, I will keep a light, a medium, and a dark for as long as I'm working with that particular paint kit. And that way it's all they're always there. You can use them however you need to, but that is just my method. While that swatch is drying, we'll move to number two. Now this one I know is darker than the light paint is gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try it with the medium. I don't feel like that it's dark enough to require the dark gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try the medium to start with. Now, and once I go over the top, if I feel like it needs a lighter or darker, I can go from there. Now when it comes to number four, that is a light tan, a light beige, a light cream. So I'm automatically just going to go into my light gray as my primer. It's so funny because I'm over here trying to make these little swatches all perfect. I'm like, I am so ridiculous. <laughs> Now this number seven, it could kind of almost go either way between light and medium. So, and this is where you could make that choice. If you are unsure, it's not gonna take you that long to swatch both light and medium. If that's what makes you feel better, 
and more confident in your end result, swatch them both. I would probably start with medium myself. Sometimes it's so close that I'm not sure and I will swatch them both. Eight is one of those tricky reds because it is transparent and it is streaky and it's got all that stuff going on and we talked about in the beginning how medium gray and I'll go back to my little card here and you know this card is not just to be cute and kind of introduce you to you know the kit and whatever there is actually information in here and and that's why when I was explaining it to begin with I was like, you know, I want you to understand that these little grays have personality because medium gray, it says she's a neutral party. And so she can work with the same colors that light gray works with, like in number four here, you know, she could kind of go with that one, the light and airy colors like orange, things like that. But she also can help and play nice with the streaky paints that dark gray that might be you know lighter than what dark gray can help with and so here's one of those situations where she is going to play nice and is going to be that middle of the road person who can help in this situation this red is not so dark in tone or in shade that it is you know going to be as dark as this but it might be too light for dark gray so in this situation, we're gonna swatch both the medium and the gray, and we're going to test after we've put our, our original color over the top to see which one we think looks best and which one we want to be our final outcome. Now that that dark gray has dried, you can see what a beautiful value it has. And it's, you know, much lighter here. And so as they dry, you can see a big difference. So this morning on the group, I got on really quickly before I came in to finish recording this video. And someone mentioned that these grays almost, they have a green tint to them. And if you hold something green up to them, you can see that it's not, let me see if I got a little, it's not a green tint. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I ended up going with a very neutral, warm, middle of the road gray instead of the cool grays because they work so well with a variety and a range of colors. And uh, after a lot of testing, that's what I finalized because I wanted them to work well with cools and, and warms and everything in between. So now that these are starting to dry. I will start at the top and we will go over the top with this streaky paint. Now, another thing that was mentioned is that when you're dealing with a streaky paint over another paint, what happens sometimes is that the streaky paint will streak over the top. Now, I'm gonna tell you a couple things, the reason that happens. These paints, these grays are satin finished. They have a beautiful finish. But what happens is when you have a streaky paint and if you're not using the right kind of stroke, and I know it's like, what? But if you're pushing too hard with your brush when you're putting down your layer of paint over the top, you'll start seeing the primer underneath. So I'm gonna show you what I do to prevent that. And it's probably gonna be easier once we get over here and I can show you on a larger scale, but I'm gonna show you a little bit right here and hopefully I can make it make sense better when I get here. But what I do is I apply a little less pressure on the paint itself when I'm going over my primer because of the fact that it is a satin finish. And I just use a really light stroke. And then I come down with it. And then I will take it over and just smooth it out. 
I hope I let the primer dry enough. I didn't even check it. And then I, while it's still wet, I just take a little bit more. Now, I don't want to put too much. And I think that's a lot of the trouble people see is they will apply too much paint on their brush. And then they're just moving it around and it starts to erase the paint they put on. Plus, they're overworking it. So if you notice, just doing it that way, beautiful coverage, beautiful opacity, zero streaking. And I'll hold that up in just a second and let you see it after it dries. So while that's drying, I'll go ahead and paint all of these on time lapse. And then I'll hold it up and let you see the overall finished swatch. So you can see how perfect the coverage is with that primer underneath. And then we'll go and put it on the canvas. wanted to swatch the light gray here to show you that if I want this orange to pop a little bit more or to be a little lighter I can apply the light gray underneath and so after I had done the entire swatch I thought let me just show you because orange can go either way and especially a brighter orange like this even though the one that they show is a little deeper I didn't think it would hurt to show you that while we're here in this video in the moment so let me go over that one then we're going to analyze what these look like overall. And I know it's not dry yet, but you can see how it brightened up the paint with the light gray under it a little bit more than the medium. So here is where you would decide which one of those do you want as your finished color in this piece? So here, they're mostly deep colors in our project. So I would maybe go with the medium underneath as my primer only to make sure that I don't have any like super bright colors and whatnot. So let's consider this. If you have a paint by number in front of you and you've received paints and you're like, even though they might be perfectly opaque, but the tone is wrong and you're thinking, okay, this orange doesn't match the rest of my paints and my palette. Like this doesn't seem to go. I have all these warm colors and all of a sudden I have this bright orange and it's fluorescent and it just doesn't work. Put down a layer of gray primer, one of these grays, and it will tone down that orange. And if I put a dark gray down and then I put that orange over the top, it's going to give me a deeper orange and it will make it work with the rest of my palette. And someone had mentioned this on the group at the end when they finished, they posted their completed work and they were like, I'm struggling with this orange. It just doesn't go with my decor. And it was supposed to be deeper orange, like a burnt orange. And what can I do? And I'd offered her some suggestions, but to be honest, now that I look back, if she had had the ability to go in and prime those cells first with a darker gray, she could have gone over with that brighter orange and it would have toned them down. It would have made them a deeper orange and that would have worked for her as well. So that is something that just kind of occurred to me as I'm working, that would be an alternative. So the grays maybe don't even have to just be used in the situation I'm showing you. Another question I get asked all the time is, can you mix the grays with your paint in the overall rule of thumb it would be absolutely not so i'm going to tell you no even though it would be a time efficient you know way to go uh, and it seems very logical it would change the overall color 
vastly and you don't want to do that. Let's take a closer look at our swatch. So now you see how that streaky paint is now perfectly smooth. It doesn't have any streaks. So I applied a fairly thin layer and I did not apply a lot of pressure in my brush. And what that does is it keeps it from getting like wiping off paint as I stroke, like I explained. And it is a perfect opacity, a perfect smooth surface. This one is absolutely gorgeous with the light gray under it, but I would choose the medium, as I said, because I want the deeper tone for this piece, but I love the medium under it. Now this one, it kind of surprises me because you've got this beigey, very transparent color and you're thinking, well, you're putting gray under that, you know, what's gonna happen? Well, the gray that I chose, and again, the reason I chose it was because it was a neutral to warm gray. Look how beautiful it looked. It made that the perfect final color. And it's just fabulous. It's no longer transparent and it has a beautiful finish. And then seven, either one of those would be fabulous, medium or light. So you could prime with either one. I would probably go with light because I have more in my kit and they are fabulous. And that is a perfect final color. Eight was a really good test because again, depending on the depth I'm looking for in that red, whether I want a little bit brighter red or whether I wanted a deep solid red, that's how I can decide whether I use a medium or a dark primer. But either one was beautiful. Neither is streaky anymore. And the final piece is completely opaque. So this I'm hoping the guide that I've developed and the kit together are amazing tools, I believe. And I hope you'll find that they are. And let me put this down and we're gonna get refocused and do a few test spots on the canvas. And then we will call this video done. So the test spot I'm gonna do as all of this is eight, but I'm not gonna go and do it all. So I'm only gonna do just a small area of this just to show you this red and how it will cover and in this larger area. I am gonna go with the mid-tone with the medium instead of the dark because I have other shades of red in this palette. So I have a deeper red with number nine and I have a brighter red with number three and so because of that i'm going to go with the medium and keep this as my medium tone red for this piece so i'm going to fill in i'll time lapse all of this and i will go ahead and just paint this area here with the primer and then i will go over it with the number eight and we will take a final look and how that looks with those two layers see what we think and that will be it so let's get started
And now I think we can call this angelic red. <laughs> my stroke mark might be more obvious than I would like at this moment because the lights are just like bow, 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 bow. But hopefully you can see that that is a beautiful, non-streaky, very opaque red and it is gorgeous. So I am super happy with that outcome and it didn't take that much longer to put down that medium gray and then put that color over the top. The only thing, only thing that I would change is that I would prefer if this had been a gessoed canvas because it was making my eye twitch that I had to cover up anything. Oh my gosh, like go over it. It was driving me nuts. But if it had been a clear gessoed canvas, it would have been even a better experience. But that is just a gorgeous red and I'm in love with that finished color and it pops. So for those of you who pre-ordered the Gray's kits and you have them in your hands and you've been sitting there going, now what do I do? <laughs> or for those of you who had not gotten one yet because you just weren't sure why you needed it or whether you needed it um, or what to do with it once you got it. I hope this video has been extremely helpful. I hope it's visually explained to you the purpose in this kit and why it was so important for me to design it, you know, create it for those of us who have struggled with these translucent transparent paints for all this time or those streaky paints and you now see why this has been such a labor of love for me. I'm of the belief that Pay by numbers are cathartic, therapeutic. They can be Zen therapy for so many people in so many situations. So for me, this was more about making that passion that we all have for this hobby that much more enjoyable, which is why at the last minute, I threw in the survival kit for the payment numbers just because I felt like this will help you survive that painting that you've just been struggling with and it's causing you anxiety because if you are not enjoying the process, then the whole point of doing the paint by numbers to begin with is kind of out the window. So this was my attempt to help you continue to enjoy the process. I will put links below about where you can find the kit. I'll also link you to the new digital swatch guide so you can find that and use it in conjunction with the kit. I always appreciate you guys for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you back soon.